So it's really important that you have a communication plan as well. So your primary communication plan is typically going to be something like a cell phone, a computer, possibly some sort of social media. Power can certainly go out, services can certainly go down. Something that typically always going to work without any kind of issue is going to be some sort of a handheld radio. There's all kinds of different handheld radios that you can get. I do have a couple of them here. So the first radio I ever bought would have been the Waxon radios. These radios work really, really well. They've held up really well. These radios are about 15 years old there now. The only issue I'd complain about these radios would be how long it takes the actual batteries to charge. I don't know if this is fixed with their newer radios, but these radios take a really, really long time to charge, I found. The antenna on them, these are a really, really good antenna. I haven't had any issues with these antennas. Sometimes I switch them out with some of the other ones. Now for the batteries, what I've done is I do have extra batteries for all my radios so I can switch batteries out. So I've numbered all my batteries. So if there is a defective battery on any of my radios, I can just take the battery off and take that out of service and then order a new battery in the, in the intern. For the radios, they're pretty straightforward. There's two dials on top. Your first dial is going to turn the actual radio on. Your second dial is going to switch between channels. And you can set it up to switch between two individual channels. You can also set it to switch in between two different channels and monitor both those channels at the same time. You can also lock the radio by pressing and holding the lock key. There's also several different features that do take quite a while to go through. In regards to programming these radios, your best bet's going to be to use Chirp to program them because it's going to be the fastest and the easiest way. It also allows you to put more numbers into them itself. So rather than just have a dot and then three numbers, it allows you to put additional numbers in addition to the three numbers. The other radios that I have, Beofang UV9RTP. These are a really good radio as well. With these radios, they are waterproof. So they have a waterproof cover on the side that you can screw off so that you can add different attachments to it. With these radios, there's only one knob on the top. Channel mode. Same exact idea. You can either monitor one channel or multiple channels at Menu. the same time. Pretty much the exact same setup as the locks on radio. The keypads are all pretty standard as well. There's a few more buttons on the side. You have your push to talk for a radio. There's also a light not light or a button on the top to activate the light. There's on the top that red button is an SOS button, which will send out an SOS. For the batteries on these, I only have one set of batteries for each one of these radios. I do want to get a few more batteries. Uh, these batteries charge extremely quickly compared to the walks on radios, which is something I really like. For this particular model of radio, I don't believe you can get an extended battery. For some of the other Beofang radios or Beifang radios, you can get a bigger batteries that'll last longer. So this radio does say that it is a digital radio. This is not a digital radio, it's only analog. With a digital radio, what you can do, you can set it to either digital only or digital and analog. So it'll receive both digital signals and analog signals. With a digital signal, an analog radio cannot pick up that digital signal. So one of the easiest upgrades you can make to any radio would be upgrade the actual antenna itself. So for the radio, I have a couple of different antennas that I can stick on here. So I have this Nagoya radio antenna. What I had to do to get these to fit on the Beofang UV9RTP was I just had to ream that top out just a little bit because it was just a little bit too big to fit anything other than the standard radio. But once I did that, all my radio antennas will actually fit on. So some of the other types of antennas you can get would be like a gooseneck antenna. With a gooseneck antenna, the top part of the antenna itself is hard and then it can be bent to different angles. And depending on how big the antenna, what type of antenna you're using, it's going to give you better frequencies on different ranges. It can also uh, extend the, the range of the radio as well, just because the actual antenna itself is longer. One of the other options I have as well in regards to radio, if we look at the back of my plate carrier, I have a UV9R on there as well. 
So with that, I have a whip style antenna. So you can either fold that whip up or you can unfold it. They do come in, in different lengths. And with that, the longer the antenna, like I said earlier, it'll give you better reception to pick up and transmit those signals. A good example of that is the last place I was working inside the building, you could hear the radios that we were ha using. And I would have just had one of the smaller size antennas. So all the radios that they had would have been this style of antenna. With the walks on radio, I was able to hear it probably about three, four kilometers away, no problem at all. But if I were to transmit to them, they couldn't hear anything I was saying at all, just because their antenna wasn't capable of picking that up. So that can have a big influence on how far you're able to transmit. The other thing that you might want to be able to use would be like a PTT, which is a push to talk button. So there's different types of push to talk buttons that you can get. So if you look at the actual radio itself on the side, I have a push to talk that'll go right to here. So just push the button on the side, push the talk, and that'll hook up to different headsets. So for the, the headsets, for this particular one, it is a it is a Wade Simmons. You can switch the microphone from either side side of the, the headset. You can also change the individual leads on them as well. Now that'll just plug into the plug into the push to talk button. Some other types of microphones that you can use would be like a standard push to talk button. So for my walks on radios, I just have these small ones I can put on the side. Hold it down to talk let it go to be able to listen exact same idea another type of push to talk that you can use would be a throat mic so with a throat mic the two sensors on either side will pick up any vibrations in your, in your throat you don't really need to talk loud at all you can talk so quietly that you can't hear yourself talk and the radio will still be able to pick that up you can also plug in a small earpiece as well that'll allow the noise or the radio to transmit directly to your ear. You can also turn the radio up so that you can hear it outside of the radio as well. So you need to be paying attention to how loud you actually set that. Now, if you turn that all, all the way up, it won't increase the volume that's going inside your ear, but you will be able to hear the radio outside of that earpiece as well. Or my different cables that I have. So a lot of my cables I found were too long. So what I actually did was I cut the cables, I spliced them all together, soldered everything together, then put a heat shrink on it. And I've done that for like my charging cables. I've done that for the communication cables for the actual radio itself. I also have some adapters so I can go from one type of radio to headset to another radio headset so that they will be interchangeable now with these i did have to make them myself i couldn't necessarily find the exact right adapters for each individual one the other one that i had to make myself was this adapter right here so this adapter will plug into my repeater so that i can hook my radio into the repeater this is the stock one that came with my little repeater so what a repeater will do it basically repeats your signal there's two different types of, of repeaters that you can use. One type of repeater, you push the button, it'll instantaneously transmit the signal that you're producing, transfer that right back out as you're talking. The other type of repeater that you can use is the one that I have. And with that type of repeater, what'll happen is it'll record your message. So with mine, it'll be, allow you to record a one minute message, a 30 second message, and a 10 second message. And you can set that to either repeat that signal right away, or you can save it on and then someone will need to dial a, a password into it to play that message back as well. So for my, my repeater, what I have is the Shorecom radio repeater, simplex repeater. So there's simplex and duplex, which is what I kind of explained earlier. So simplex will save it and record it and then play it back with a duplex repeater. What it'll do is it'll play it back at the exact same time. So Shorecom makes both different models. So these actually have a built-in battery as well. So the built-in battery, I believe on these off the top of my head lasts about six or eight hours. 
You can also plug them into a power source as well so that you don't have to worry about the battery dying on. The other thing with the repeater, so with a repeater, what it'll allow you to do is it'll allow you to extend the actual radio signals. So with the, that extension, what you can do is you can have point A transmitting to your repeater, which could be three or four miles away or further dependent on the elevation and other factors. It'll transmit to that and then it'll retransmit it further out. So with that retransmit, you can either transmit on the exact same frequency or transmit it the second time on a different frequency as well. So that could be done for all kinds of different reasons. It could be terrain features. It could be you're transmitting from one type of radio to another type of radio that doesn't have the ability to transmit on both types of frequencies because there's UHF, VHF that you're typically going to get with an HT or handy talkie. With the Beofang radios, how the connector or belt clip works for these, that piece can screw in right into the back here and it'll just slide on and slide off onto that belt clip. With the Waxon radios, clip on those look a little bit differently. With the Waxon radios on the back of them, they're just gonna slide in, fit in a little groove there slide it down and it'll stay on your belt if there's anything else on, on any of my kit that you wanted me to do a review on just leave a comment underneath and i'll be more than happy to make a video on that specific topic and don't forget to share my video make sure you smash that like button all the radios i have will also pack up very nicely inside of a 30 cal ammo can